are back. Took three months, but we're back. We're so bad. The ghost happened. Yes, we are back. Yeah. The ghost walk. Never wanted to record. He lied to me. Kept putting it off. No, your fault. It, it is partially my fault. Mm. It's also partially the nose fault. Mostly my fault though. Oh, it has been three months and uh, we've had a very interesting three months. Because in that time we've had a heat wave. The hottest day in the fucking year of 37 degrees. And it stayed at 37 degrees yes. all night. So that was a fun day. Um, Nadal has finally got onto the point where he wants to create his own vision and his own documentary about people with disabilities. And uh, we took a step forward with that. We're gonna talk about that now. We took a step forward with that because uh, Nadal reached out to some people and then this lovely little lady uh, messaged him back saying her name Caprice. Caprice? Caprice? Yeah. Uh, she messaged him back, like saying, yeah, and then they got chatting, obviously, in the DMs, like, I'd love to do it, blah, 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 and then we was gonna, we were gonna go and do it on, about two weeks ago, about two weeks ago, we were gonna go film the, um, the entire, like, the beginning of the documentary, just talking to her, but, she, uh, I guess she wanted to know a little bit more about the whole project, which was understandable, like the dog. But it was better. Yeah, the dog's vision and uh, the dog, what the wanted to accomplish with it. Uh, now she is, she's someone who suffers with chronic pain, so she has to walk with crutches. But uh, she does do beauty, and I um, hope she doesn't mind me saying she's a very beautiful young lady, and she does a lot of uh, inspirational things. And fashion. Yeah, beauty, beauty and fashion. It's like really, really amazing what she does, considering she deals with chronic pain. Um, but yeah, we we went to a, we went to a cluster, sat down, and she asked us a few questions. Got accompanied by her mum, which was quite funny because her mum did most of the talking for her. I was like, it was quite funny because her mum came and then I was in the doll's advocate and her mum was her advocate, so I felt like the doll's proud dad in the day. <laughs> Oh my god. What, what else has happened within the three month period, though? You know? That's like. Jesus Christ! <laughs> As you may have just heard, you heard my dog chasing my cat. But that was, uh. I don't know really what's happened in this three month period. We've had things on. Nothing also. really. Yeah, that's the thing, nothing really occurred. Yeah, that's, we, we we lead very boring lives, if we're being honest. Like, we wake up, we eat, we watch YouTube videos, adult edits, and then occasionally we go outside. <laughs> we leave, we lead very boring lives, and uh, that kind of needs to change. We got to do more. Yeah, we do got to do more. We need to change that. We need to change the whole lifestyle of, it, of like, getting out and about and going places, even if it is just to the park every now and then, or if it's going, taking a trip to London and stuff like that. There are, obviously there are certain obstacles that we've got to get over, obviously, like, thankfully that I've somehow found someone to accompany us to London, so that's one thing that we've got over a barrier, but it's, there's still obstacles, like, oh, I have a laugh, I have a laugh, I, I, uh, so I've got to go, I have to have these, um, these injections in the back of my head, okay? I don't know, I'm not sure you reckon now I can I have to get into, into London is. Forty pounds. Yep. Forty fucking quid. Just consider the congestion charge. It is absolutely fudging disgraceful. I could not believe it when they said it on the phone the other day. Because I have to go to London to go to uh, St Thomas's Hospital to have 
um, the needles in the back of my head to stop myself from having, having migraines, which I suffer from. And I thought, all right, you know, it's only twenty. Normally, it's only twenty-five pound. I'll go there and I'll. Uh, I will get the. Um, Do you go in the black cabs? So I can get a, I can get a taxi cab, but even even a taxi cab is still thirty-two pound. You know. I was like, I was on the phone and I was like, yeah, I'll get a cab up there and everything. It's only £25. There and back, it's obviously 50 quid, but it's worth it for the injections that I'm going to have. And then when they said they opted to 38, I'm like, oh my god. No, 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 no. So, uh, I will be taking the train next Thursday. That's exactly what I will be doing next Thursday. I will be uh, taking the train to. London and then uh, getting off and walking to the walking to the hospital because screw that and poor he grew. London is so expensive. It's it's expensive even just to do things up there. Like if you want to do London Two Swords, it's thirty six pounds. You want to do the London Night, it's thirty pounds. Most of the attractions up there are thirty pounds and up. And uh, that's uh, it's kind of ridiculous when the money, the money that we get, because we don't get a lot of money, you know, between us. But the money that we get, we ain't got to pay bills, and then there's obviously the other necessities that we want, obviously, like a Netflix, a Now TV, a Spotify, stuff like that. We all have to pay for. So adding that up, obviously. It comes over sometimes over thirty quid, and out of the money that we get, we're not left with much. And obviously, when we get to there, we've got either plan to take a lunch with us or plan to get food up there. But then again, London itself isn't very accessible for wheelchairs and that. So you're gonna say go into like a a subway or a McDonald's. You've got to make sure the floor is accessible to get around. And uh, it's not always accessible, the roads are sometimes bumpy and that, and cracked. So it's like an aura, it's like, it's a weird aura mason, where you want to go and do things, but there's this thing in the way that's like, oh, you can do this, but then there's this in the, there's this in the way, and you're like, ah! <laughs> so yeah. The dog's typing something. This is very long. Like in the dark. That's why we are doing this documentary to understand. Mm hmm. This whole reason that the documentary, the, the whole documentary he wants to do is he wants people to understand that uh, it's, we've got so many obstacles in our way. Oh! Sorry, my love just stabbed me with my nails. There's so many obstacles that are in the way of what we want to do and mm, people kind of take it for granted being able to hop off on a hop off on and on a, on a train uh hop 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 on and off a bus because i can't get on a bus no no can get on a bus but it's still tricky because of his balance so he uses uber majority of the time um but trains and that you have the trains you have to get the fucking you call ahead to make sure you can get the train, get the ramp, and then if you're not there by a certain time and you miss the train, you have to wait for the next one, and you have to ask them, can you get the ramp ready? There's a whole lot of shit that uh, we get thrown at us, and everyone kind of takes for granted in a sense. And that's why we want to do the documentary, to let other people know that, yes, we have a voice, and yes, we want to do things, but doing something for us is like 10 times harder than what what other people get have to do come on don't just don't up yeah it's kind of like there's always this like semi obstacle in front of us and we want people to understand that we're not lazy or nothing it's just 
there's so many things that are stopping us from doing what we want to do. And uh, there are, it's not just me and the dog, there are so many people out there with disabilities that are in a similar, that are in the same situation that we are. So, stuck indoors, uh, not being able to have a carer um, to accompany us or help us do things. Now, as much as we like to be independent within ourselves, there are, we have our limits. And uh, because of those limits, we get we get knocked down a lot from what we want to do. Because we get to a point where we think, all right, cool, we're happy with where we are. Uh, we want to try and take the next step. For a normal person, it's one step. For us, it's like three steps. And we have to figure out a way to jump those three steps with adding in other con- conclusions of, okay, if we don't make that, f- make that step, how else can we do it? Really tricky. People don't understand how difficult it is to go out there. Yeah, no. It's not even the fact of, it's also the fact of like, just general things. Because like, if you try and go out, like, even to the, the local high street, Beckham's a bastard. Like, the roads there and everything, and the pavements, they've done them all up now, but like, couple years ago they were dodgy as hell but then again there's one thing I hate about Beckenham is that we have a Starbucks okay I love a Starbucks but they have a step I can't get into it it's so annoying I'm like I have to settle for fucking Eva Costa or a fucking Cafe Nero and there are other shops like it as well like there's like uh, food shops like uh, chicken shops that I want to go into, but again, they have a step, and I think something that should be put into place is that all um, working shops that have a step should have a ramp, like mandatory, have a ramp that disabled people can press a button for on the outside if they can, obviously, or if they're with someone, then you can you can press that button. And then someone knows and they've got to get around for that person. Because that would make the world so much easier for people and it would diverse the world so much more. Because then people would understand that they'd like to go into this shop, into that shop and then they can, can see people wanting to do other things. And the dog's the the nodding. <laughs> He's like, I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Was in the fucking three months that we've just not done nothing. Damn, really like nothing really has occurred enough for us to do anything. Um, I mean, the only thing I've truly done is I've been to the cinema way too much. I obviously have to take my brother to cinema so going to cinema oh my god I think I've been about 30 times this year maybe maybe more but that was talking. are you going to say the thing I'm gonna say the thing what thing are we talking about there's a thing Recently, I uh, got into a, a relationship with a girl. A girl both in the time I've actually known for quite a few years. She was at school with us. Well, she, so Nadal went to school with her first, and then I joined the school. And then, admittedly, let's talk about, let me talk about her a little bit. So, when I first joined the school, oh my god, she she listens to this. She's gonna kill me. But oh my god, she was a crazy bitch. Sorry, Molly. But you were. You were crazy. And then, uh, halfway through year seven, she left. You know, halfway through year seven, she left. Not gonna lie, I was pretty happy about it. <laughs> because she was a little bit nutty. And then, uh, 
she uh, there was one it was one day on fucking like the year before we going into FE uh, like the, the couple of months before we going into like six form sorry um, we get a message pop up on Facebook Molly has tagged you in a post I'm coming back I text the door I was like no I'm joking like obviously she came back obviously and uh, she was around in school she uh, she'd matured a lot and uh, she'd grown up a lot and puberty hit obviously and uh, my wandering eyes fell and then yeah we not recent so actually a month of the day I've been home I've been with her for a month today yeah it's crazy Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. You, <laughs> you mean congrats. congrats. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's a very lovely girl and I hope it does go far. Now we just need to find a doll someone that's gonna love him for him. It's hard. It's very hard. Trust me, like... Trying to find someone when you've got a disability is the most annoying thing in the world because people see it as, I know, uh, obviously you can obviously tell that Molly has a disability, she has cerebral palsy, so it was kind of a little bit more easier to get into the relationship with her because we both got something wrong with us, and I don't mean wrong, like it's a bad thing, it's just we've got both got disabilities. No. We both got disabilities, um, but if you're if you're someone at the door, you're kind of searching for someone with without a disability, and that's what he prefers. Obviously, if he ever found someone who is, who does have a disability and he ma found her to be very attractive and start to feel like he could go somewhere with her, great. But at this moment in time, he is so he is searching for someone without a disability because that's his preference. He wants someone non-disability so he can do more things with them. Because I'll be the first to mention that that it's very difficult to do to do stuff with someone. Well it's just a matter. Oh no 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 that's what I'm saying. Your pre your, obviously your preference is someone without disability but if you manage to find someone with a disability who is also attractive and you find attractive it's great. But I, as someone who is dating someone with a disability, there are obviously more challenges to it because um, I'm obviously in my chair, so I'm getting to doing things like going to Nando's or going to a restaurant, something like that. It's more difficult because we have to make sure it's accessible, making sure we can get into it. But we we don't see it as Something that's but you can understand each other, though. Oh yeah, hundred percent. If you've got, if you're dating someone who's got a disability, you on you instantly feel more comfortable with the person because you can relate to them on a knowable level. Um, that's definitely how me and Molly feel. Obviously, not obviously from knowing her and also having the disabilities, a lot more easier, easier, more free flowing with the relationship. But we never see like something as impossible we see it as all right how do we go how do we do this and how do we go there and that's with, that's literally with everything like even just going to the cinema um stairs are a little bit difficult for me and also a little bit difficult for molly so if we can get into the screens that i want us the the we're accessible excuse me we will take those um but if there is, does come to a time where we have to use the stairs, we will slowly and surely use the stairs and get to our, get to our screen. And that's the same with like going for food. Um, like obviously the, Be the Beckham Nando's is a bit of a bitch because it has a step. So, oh my god, voice crack, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> um, but we figure out a way, like I normally, if we're going to go there, I'd get a cab into Beckenham and then walk the two minute walk from the cinema to Nando's. And even though that it's only two minutes, that's still very tiring for me because of what is wrong with me. I've obviously my legs get tired very quickly. Um, so she she tends to worry a lot about 
me doing a lot of walking, but I have to not. I told her, I'm like, I don't know how long I've got my legs left, you know? Because of what they told me when I was 11, they told me, the doctors told me one day you will wake up and you will not have your legs. You will be paralyzed from the waist down. A lot is taken out of love. Wait, you walk to there? Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not from here obviously. I get a cab to the cinema, it's from outside, outside the cinema, and then from the cinema I walk to, the, walk to Nando's in the high street. And to be honest, it's a two, three minute walk. You know? So it's not, a, a not too bad to walk it. So. Because there's otherwise there's no other way of getting in. Because they haven't got a ramp, you know? Uh, it's sacrifices you have to make to be able to do, to, do, to enjoy the things you love. I understand it. Obviously, Nadal's got a bit more free flow because he can do the walking, even though he's got cerebral palsy. He does get tired, obviously, but he can withstand the walking a lot more. Whereas me, I'm tending, I can walk for a short amount of time, not for a long amount of time. And uh, that's why generally when I'm going out and about, I use my chair. Yeah. That's kind of the coverage of my relationship with Molly and she's probably going to listen to this and probably kill me. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. What does a... Uh, so what has an adult been up to in the last three months? Just been preparing for this documentary, which yeah. has been hard, but at the end of the day it is a good cause. Yep. So what, uh, that's the thing though, that's the thing you love and you're passionate about it, and that's why you've been doing it. Because it's like, it's not easy, because, I don't know if you want to talk about it, but it's, you've, you've had problems that, with your family about it, because your dad wants you to do things and go out, but this is your passion, you know, you've wanted to do this ever since you were like 17, you know, 23, so... We've all, you've always had this fire inside you to do something, now you're fully getting the opportunity to do it. So, you you would get, you get you don't put the bait in the water and then take it back out, no. You put the bait in the water and then someone takes the fish grabs hold of it, you bring it back in and that's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You're reeling it back in. And at the moment it's only a small fish, but you put, you put the bait back in the water and you expect to get bigger fish. Yeah. He typing again. And what about your counseling? Counseling kind of took a setback. Not gonna lie. Because it seems like the more I reach out, the less people come forward. So. I've kind of taken it as if people people know that I'm a counsellor now, if they want my help, obviously I'm only a message away. But promote, I think promoting yourself and then letting people know you're a counsellor, it kind of I think in a way it kind of scares people. Um, you have to let them come to you in a sense, and be, me being me, I'm always like, oh, I'll try and promote myself, and I did it in the past and. I had a few people come forward, but it kind of got to a dwindle thing. I was promoting myself, promoting myself, going to going to coffee shops, seeing if people would turn up, and it just wasn't working out. So I've taken it upon myself to go, all right, people now know, I've got my word out there, this is what I do, but if they want to come to me and talk, they're going to have to do it off their own back. Um, if they want to, listen, it doesn't take two seconds to send me a message saying, hey, I need some help and I'll be right on it, but I'm not going to be the one to keep putting myself out there. It's like a relationship in a sense, mm. you know, because the more you put yourself out there, the harder it is to find to find someone. Mm. Um, and uh, in a sense, you've kind of got to let... I, my mum told me this when I was waiting to find someone, obviously, that I found Molly. My mum was like, good things come to those who wait. 
And it's the same, it's kind of similar to counseling. Because. That's it, wise in life. That's what in life? That's a piles in life. Get it in a minute, folks. That supplies in life. That supplies in life. Yeah, it does apply in life. Because the more you put yourself out there, if even with anything, like you could put yourself out there a thousand times and you could get shot down. You could get shot down a thousand times. But it only takes one person to come to you and go, hey, I actually like your idea on this, or yes, I need some help, or do you want to try dating but it take in like it like people say it takes two to tango and <coughs> in any business in the doll with his film direct documentary me with my counseling or just in any type of relationship you have to be willing to have the patience to wait for something to come along and say Okay, here I am. Oh, oh, let me hear your ideas, and then we'll go from there. Well, at least that's how I've been for a bit for the last two, three years. Because it hasn't always been easy. We've had a, we've both had many setbacks. We've both like our careers and both with relationships but we're sticking at it obviously I'm, I'm lucky enough to find someone I don't think it'll be much longer until Nadal actually does find someone and he can have someone who can support him with his uh, his dream and moving forward with the documentary true I know true <laughs> yeah yeah should we end it there so uh, we'll try not to make it every three months again. We'll try and keep it weekly, and we'll try. And next time we'll do a uh, proper subject, and we'll do some research on it. But that is all the time we really have time for. We will be back soon. I'm not going to say when, because I don't know. But we'll be back with uh, another podcast regarding a subject in the near future. In the dog's happen. This is a long one. <laughs> if you any subjects we can talk about, just message us in it. Yeah. We will see you soon. Bye.